and I'm humble. Um, T is one of my favorite people in the world and one of my shining examples. And uh, I try to emulate. Thank you, Ali and Teresa, for, put, for this format and this platform. And I always, always, I don't care where I go or what I do, um, there are always some people I pay homage to. And so I see uh, Mildred on here. I see my good friend Wes on here. I'm not going down the line of people because people will start giving resentments, Deidre, I know. Um, but I like to pay homage to some of my elders that are on here too. And Mildred, it's always uh, a pleasure to be in your company. And you are one of the examples of the 11th step. So I'll through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood and praying only for knowledge of his will and the power to carry that out. And this is a, it's a privilege to participate in this workshop series. I've heard almost every other person who's been on here who set the stage. And the part that Teresa assigned me is uh, toward the end of the 11th step. We pause when agitated you know or doubtful and it's a it sounds narrow but it's 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 a broad plane you know the 11th step and I'm gonna try to stay um, so I'm, I'm really gonna try to stay in the 11th step and that caveat now I'm gonna stray outside of it and, and paint outside the lines because for me um, I don't I don't look at our process of recovery as a discrete series of independent actions. I look at it as a way of living. You know, I've been doing this, my sobriety date is October the 11th of 1986, which means I've been on this path um, for over 33 years. And it's, I've incorporated this manner of living. They used to call, we talk about the AA way of living, a design for living that really works. And I've incorporated it as a way of life. And so in, in approaching any of these steps, I don't see them as standalone, independent uh, essays that we give, even though we give talks on them. Now, uh, let me give a disclaimer. And I'm humble, because I was on here listening to some people beforehand, um, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna do the false modesty thing. I like, um, I like being appreciated, and I like, um, having recognition, but I don't bite. I don't read my own press clippings and I don't grade my own paper. And I'm a guy, I'm an alcoholic stumbling through the deal. And I found something in this, and it talks about it at the end, end of the 11th step. Right, when we follow after this part I'm gonna talk about, and it talks about, so we let God discipline us in this way. Discipline is not a word that I'm comfortable with or that I like. A lot of spiritually principled terms are terms, in, when we read We Agnostic, it says, when you, the first building block to getting a relationship with this power that we're, that we're making a conscious contact with and we're trying to improve our conscious contact with in step 11. But in step two, when we first start embarking on this journey, it says, one of the things that you do, Ralph, when you want to get on this spiritual journey, ask yourself what spiritual terms mean to you. And I didn't always know what spiritual terms are, but almost everything that's a principle, that's a principled action, is a spiritual term. So some of the things, responsibility, discipline, um, uh, sacrifice, those, none of them, none of them, none of them. You know, because discipline to me, if you grew up in the White House, my last name is White, I got a mom at the wheel. If you grew up there, it meant a belt on that. That's what discipline meant. It meant Ralph did something, now he's getting, it, it was synonymous, synonymous with punishment. You know, so being disciplined. But on the other hand, the, being a disciplined person, there are some things that I'm very disciplined about. And so now when I look at that word discipline, we let God discipline us in this way, because I'm an undisciplined guy, I'm a seat of the pants guy. So, one of the benefits of this 11 step and this 12 step process is Ralph is going to get something that he needs in order to be successful in life. And what discipline means is consistency, uh, persistence, um, uh, accountability. Um, and, and so these are things that I'm now going to acquire in the 11 step. This last part of the 11 step, the first part, 
in the eleventh step, uh, there are three discrete aspects that most of us talk about. And the first aspect of the eleventh step we talk about takes place at night, the nightly review. And so when I go, when I when I review my day. I look back on it and I ask myself some very specific kinds of questions. When you've been doing it as long as I've been doing it, I kind of take shortcuts. I don't have to lay in the bed and ask the questions specifically that way, but I like the way that they're outlined because if I ask them and I answer them that way, I start developing the discipline, developing the discipline. I look back on my night. And here's the curious thing, you guys, when you look at it, what's the first things we do when we look at the 11 step at night? I ask myself, you know, those same same questions I ask myself in the 10th step, which are the same questions I ask myself way back in the fourth step. Where have I been selfish? Where have I been dishonest? You know, where have I been resentful? And where have I been scared? Where was I scared? And I ask myself those questions. Then I get more specific in the day. You know, do I owe anybody an apology? Ralph, did you do what you did and you did and you went and now you in the bed tonight and you realize that when you got sideways with old boy at work, you didn't make it right right at the time. Do I owe anybody an apology? Should I have discussed something with somebody that I didn't discuss? You didn't call your sponsor. You ain't called Teresa to get her input on nothing. You ain't talked to one of your boys about this. You just feel like because you built the way that you are, dude had it come. You know, he had it coming. So I'm, I'm walking in this realm of the spirit, but I'm still making messes, right? And so I look at it in, at, at night, you know, and then at the end of this review, and it's not a morbid review, it's not a modern review, it's a, it's, a, it's a constructive review. And at the end of it, I ask, now I do a prayer. You know, what should I have done, God? The book talks about corrective measures I should have taken. What should I have done to do make this thing right? You know, if I owe somebody an apology or if I owe an amends or if it's something I should have straightened out and I ask God for the power to, go, to do whatever it is. I ask him for his forgiveness because I'm tripping. I trip, I still do. Okay, God. Do, you know your boy, you know, and and then and so then when I get up in the morning, I get up with a clean slate, you know, and I'm reviewing what you guys have heard from other people who've talked about this 11th step, talking about my practice. And I get up in the morning, and I like what Polly said last week. It's something I've now adopted, and it's doing the written when I consider my day moving forward. And I, and, and I do a written, and one of the reasons for that is it's helpful when I do the nightly review. I can look back at this, and a lot of people, it, it, you know, spiritual stuff, if it ain't practical, it ain't spiritual. You know, sometimes we make it, you know what, I'm gonna be all over the place, let's have a conversation. You know why it was so difficult for me to get into the 11th step when I was early on in this deal? Because of the way I'm built. Because of the way I'm built. And what in the way that I'm built, there are some character defects that are in me to run deep. They're my hard drive. I'm hardwired that way. And one of my biggest character defects is what I think you think about me. And one of the reasons I have that defective character is because of who I am. And you know why I, I am so consumed with what I think people think? Is because I know how I think about people. I know how judgmental I am. I know how petty I am. I know how um how, how gossipy I am. I know how I can character assassinate. I know, I know what it is. So I know I'm not imagining. You feel, you, you, you get what I'm saying? I know I'm not imagining how people can be. I know I'm not imagining how petty people can be. I know I'm not imagining how vindictive people can be. I know I'm not, I'm not imagining how envious and jealous people can be. I'm not imagining it because it's in me. It's in me deep and it's in me strong and it's in me from a kid. One of the things that took me that was one of the biggest barriers to a spiritual experience for me, I'm gonna share a couple of things. I don't like piety, you know. I do not like overly pious people. I don't like the look, I'm suspicious of them. And I, here's how Ralph White is. If it's not my experience, you lying about it being yours. I think you fake it, I think you phony. It was when I came into this deal, this new way of living that we have, and when you people from the street, like a lot of us, it's a barrier. It's an impediment. You'll look at a guy that's sitting up here, particularly when you start talking about living life in the new area code. When you, finish, when you get into the ninth step, now I get a new area code, right? I'm living in the realm of the spirit. That's a new place. That's a new, that's, I'm living somewhere that I'm not accustomed to. And when you have a lot of people talking about living in that place, sometimes they make it seem uh, although it seems like something that they tell me I ought to have, I'm not an ought to guy. 
when ought to meets want to, want to wins with this guy. I'm not an ought to guy. So when, when I, sometimes when I was new, and I hadn't even thought about this, it's coming out right now when I think about my impediments to the 11th step at first. One of the things that really I had to overcome was that prejudice toward overly spiritual people. Now, because I'm not there. So you lying about you being there. You lying about it. I'm envious. And then don't let people be praising you like a lot of people do me. Fellas, I know there's some cats on here that, who does this Ralph White think he is? All this Deidre talking about she's, a, you know, she a fan of you. Miss me. He ain't nothing. He's just another, you're right. He's just another drunk. You know, sometimes, and because and, I go there. I go there. If you're sitting in the square and you visit those places, I go there. And so now in order to elevate me, I got to cut you down because I haven't built enough. And I'm in that cut. So, so defects of character, I'm very, 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 very keenly aware of where they spring from in this guy. Now, going back to 10 and 11, when I was very young in, in recovery, and Teresa, she talked about me in the workshop. She said, Ralph says he didn't, uh, uh, that he didn't meditate. And I was referring to the attitude that I brought to the table. I used to listen to cats talk about uh, 11, and, and they were focused to me on one aspect of 11. And that, that's the aspect of meditation. And not only meditation, not necessarily contemplative meditation. Meditation is actually just contemplation. But some people, and it, it's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. But when you're a guy like me, when you hear it, seekers and searchers, who've gone and expanded and gone into other areas, don't let me listen to it. And some of my best friends, you got a pond outside the house and they sit there, they get up at four in the morning and they meditate. Since, since, I ain't, since I'm a lazy guy, you know, I'm going to knock you for being the diligent guy. And I'm the Herbert Spencer guy. I'm the contempt prior to investigation guy. So, man, I don't need to be doing all that. My life is cool anyway. And then when I really see a guy that's built that way, I'm setting the tone, you guys. Don't uh, We get in there to pause, you know, when agitated or doubtful. I'm setting the tone. When I really see a guy that's built, I got to shoot darts at him. I got to shoot darts. I got to wait and see the weaknesses. I got to wait for him to give me an opening. And if your name is Ralph White, and I'm a pedestal guy in some ways. I'm a well-known guy. I'm a, I leave footprints. I ain't tripping, you know. But when you do that, um, yeah, people look for openings. I ain't mad because I'm a look for an opening guy, you know. And I give people openings. I'm a falling down guy. I'm going to get my hands dirty guy. I'm not a floaty, floaty guy. I like being on the ground. I like talking about spiritual terms in practical ways. But one of the reasons I like talking about it is because I'm scared of the darts that it brings. But I ain't, you know, but now that I've been walking this path long enough, I'm all right. I'm all right being with me. I'm all right talking about the fact that I've discovered a power that powers me. I'm all right with talking about the fact that I've discovered a power that fuels me. When you early in recovery, one of the things that's the biggest thing, the biggest propellant in my fuel, right? Because it made my is, is desperation. But that propellant wears out. 33 years later, I'm, I'm, I'm not fueled by desperation. I got to be fueled by something else. And so what I've been fueled by now in this, this, this grace deal that we talk about is the, is the actual power. And so when we get to something, you know, when we get to 11, and now I'm, I'm, I'm okay with investigating. I'm okay with investigating that. I'm okay with being the guy from the street that's walking different. The guy from the street that's still talking with the fellas and still being who I am. Because I'm such a, I'm, I'm, I'm so wed to what I think you think. And it used to bring me down. It used to tie me down. It used to make me not sing in my own voice. It used to make me not say everything that is the fact of my life today. But the other good thing about that is the fact of my life today don't make me special, don't make me different. It makes it available. If Ralph White can do whatever it is he talked about, it's available to anybody because I'm that kind of drunk. I'm not 
the, I'm not the one to go off on the side to a monastery and get quiet. I'm not, the, and I'm not knocking it. See, that's the problem when I talk about what I'm not. It makes it seem like I have disdain for those who are. No, there are some people who are way more spiritually advanced than me. But if you're sitting on here today, I'm not to go sit on a quiet retreat ride. I'm not to go get silent for seven days, guy. I'm not the guy that gets up at four o'clock in the morning and get ready for his day. But I am the guy that's tasted this thing and his and and and, and I'm telling you, not because you guys invited me to talk on this deal. I'm telling you, 11 Step is a freedom place like no other place that you'll find. When you get in 10 and 11, why do I say that? Okay, so now when we talk about this deal in the 11 Step, on this matter of prayer, which is the biggest piece in it, we do a lot of talking about meditation, but the prayer piece is the real piece. It says in the, in the 11 Step, it says, we believe we can offer some practice, we can offer, we don't want to be vague on this matter of prayer. We can offer, you know, some real firm and solid and practical, you know, experiences and application with this deal of prayer. And so every time we look, so at the end of the night, I'm saying, in the, in, in the morning when I get through with my contemplation, I say, okay, God, give me my marching orders. You know, give me, show me what it is for me to do today and give me the power to carry it out. When I get ready to go tackle my day, take away what comes natural for me. You know, take away self-seeking motives. So, you know, so, 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 so give me my marching orders and prepare me for the day. So now it's talking about when I get, and when I meet my day, right? When I meet my day. When I go out there and get ready for it, because now I have, you know, I, like I say, I love Polly talking about that. I have a to-do list. And now when I get in it, though, you know how they say, I plan, God laughs. Life comes at you like life. Life don't come at you like math. Life don't come at you like a math problem. You no, know, life come at you like life. And so I don't care what I leave the door planning. Some things may happen during the day. And when they happen during the day, because now I'm living in the world of the spirit, check this out. Check out how this the 11 stuff starts working. So, it, so it's real life, right? It's real life. So many of us, some of us haven't got to the 11 step, save it for when I get there, many of us have. So when I get through and I start doing this, I, I did my third step and I got on my knees and I, here's, and I gotta talk about it, because this is what I'm standing on. This is what I'm standing on the rest of the way. Relieve me of the bondage yourself. So that's my deal, right? I'm doing this. I know it's too much me on me. I don't know it's too much me between me and you. I know it's too much me between me and the power. And I know it's too much me between me and my own freedom. I'm the one who holds me back. When I told you about this, the, the biggest impediment to me getting in touch with this power was me. What I thought about what spiritual people look like, how I thought it looked, how I thought, how, you know, the, the disdain I held them in and, and how I used to, and I don't want to be held in that kind of disdain for people who were like me, little people who, who so, so now, you know, I, but I've done some work. You leave me out of bondage yourself. And I start freeing myself from those bonds when I start doing a look at myself in inventory and I look at my resentments and I look at my fears and I look at my sex conduct. And when I see it, look, and I digest those terms the truth and I take them to somebody and for the first time I get a little freer because I'm telling on myself and I'm not a tell on myself guy because if you really know me you ain't gonna like me but I do that in that fifth step and I find out so wow somebody know me and I'm still all right and I go to six and seven hold on to this I go to six and seven hold on to that we're gonna talk about it you know and I surrender you know I surrender right there because I can't I can't fix me I can't change what's in me. I can see the things that need to be changed. And the first things I see that I want to get rid of are the things that make me unhappy or the things that I think make you disapprove of me. Yeah, people see this kind of stuff. I need that gone. You know, the fact that I, you know, I don't seem to have self-confidence in big groups when I'm talking at work. I need to have that kind of stuff removed. And, and so, but, but, so then they go in six and seven and say, God, do something with me. Again, just like in the third step, just like in the third step. Okay, God, do something with your boy. And I'm coming to you just like I am. Just like, isn't that a wonderful thing? To present yourself to this, just like you are. If you got a mate and if you got a spouse, the greatest gift I believe you can give somebody is take them as they are. Know them as they are and still take them just like that. I know you with your morning breath and you are right with me. And that's, that's literal and metaphorical. I know what you look like with nothing, no makeup. 
I know what you do when the lights are out. I know all about you and you still, you, might, you still, all right with me. And you can you imagine going to God? I, I used to read that seven step different and it's like, God, you know, just like this, falling down, still tripping, still lying, standing in front of y'all getting praised and the rest of this, but still capable of doing any, you know, not capable of doing all the things that you, but still capable of falling down and still doing it. And God, you took me just like that. And then when I come out of that seventh and eighth, I mean, sixth and seventh, then I make this list and I go knocking on doors, I go knocking on doors. And then I start doing this nice stuff. And so when, while I'm doing the nice stuff, I get that new address. And I'm in this realm of the spirit. So now in the realm of the spirit, while I'm going through my day, check out, check this out. We talk about, we turn on our watcher in nine and in the 10th step. Now I'm in the 11th step. So at night, I look at my day and look at the results of it. See what I could have done better. See where I fell down. Okay, God, ask your forgiveness, propel me. In the morning, I get ready for my day. Write down what I want my day to look like. Ask God to give me the power to carry it out. Ask him to guide and direct and protect all of my, my thoughts and my actions throughout the day. You know, ask him to propel me and to fuel me. Ask him to protect me, y'all from me. You know, uh, guide me and guide my thoughts and actions, right? So now I get out and I go out and I get into the day. And now I get into a situation where I might get sideways with somebody. And now I get this part when... Pause when doubtful or agitated. So when the doubtful or agitated, you know, pause when doubtful or agitated. Agitated for me, what usually agitates me? Uh -huh. When I'm agitated, it's usually because I'm scared or I'm selfish. I'm scared or I'm selfish. Pisses me off. I don't usually call it I'm agitated. I'm pissed off. I'm mad. I'm angry. Sometimes it's a little agitation. Sometimes I'm disturbed with you. Pause, pause when agitated or doubtful. Doubtful. Wonder which way I should go, which decision I should make. And the way that that works for me, in the pause when doubtful or agitated, I used to think it's situational, right? I used to think it's a pause right here pause, ask God for a thought or an action, and keep it pushing. What does that look like anyway? So pause when doubt for agitated. Now what are we calling back up? If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm agitated, usually I'm getting ready to exercise a resentment or I'm not getting ready to operate out of fear, and I get the opportunity, Teresa always talks about it, I get the opportunity to watch God remove this defect. Six and seven. I'm right there at a seven step situation. In the pause, in the pause, I'm asking God to direct my thought or my action. So do something in the pause. In the pause, I say a prayer and I get to watch God. Now I'm back at a six, I'm, I'm right back at a six and seven situation. I'm sitting up here in a defect, getting ready. Ralph, you can operate in that defect right now, or you can sit up here in this new zip code, in this realm of the spirit. You can operate in the realm of the spirit. And you can watch this power operate. That's how the steps work interchangeably. And guess what else is happening? What else happens? What's going to allow me to see that I need to pause? What's going to allow me to see when I need to pause? I'm getting ready to get agitated. It's something that I'm doubtful about. It's a situation or an action that I'm getting ready to take. That, ah, something tell me, dude, don't, 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 don't hit sin. What's that about? Ten step. Ten step. When I'm doing, this is when 10 and 8, that's why you don't get a step's numbers necessarily, because they all interact. It don't do no good to, what step are you working? Well, you might say pause and agitation, pause when, when agitated or doubtful. You might say that comes up in the 11th step. But what is taking place is what's happening for me to do it. I'm watching. I'm watching for resentment. I'm watching for, I'm watching for dishonesty. I'm watching for fear, right? And, I'm, and when these crop up, not if, when these crop up, we ask God at once the room, 10, 11, bam, right there. 
I'm standing in the middle right there. So that's how these steps are interchangeable. Somebody will say, well, they look just alike. So what? Don't forget what you call them. It's a manner of living that really works. And it's a manner of living that really works. I'm standing right here getting ready to tell Ali because I done told him too many times. And he came at me one more time with the same bullshit. Ali, come on now. You know, and I did that at work with a kid. He just was coming at me too stupid too many times. And I just went off on him, took off on him in a way that I don't do. I thought, but I do do apparently. Right. You know, and so one of the things and this pause when agitated I was, or doubtful and check out how this works and why it works so well. And pause when agitated or doubtful, you guys, it's not necessarily situational. It talks about being in much less danger of excitement. So I had a deal. And I'm a real estate guy too. had this deal that came my way. And this was some years ago. And it was a house that came my way and I wanted it. You know, I wanted to move and I wanted to get this house and I was in the business, right? So pause when doubtful agitated. It was going to take some twisty stuff in order for me to get in this. Pause. And here's the deal when you pause when doubtful or agitated. In the pause, it is very important to realize the following sentences. The pause says, we constant, we ask, see the pause says, and ask for the right thought action. Curiously, Bill didn't put in there and ask God for the right thought of action. It's implied. Why is it implied? Because I pause when doubtful, and what I do in the pause is go between two or three options that I'm coming up with. Okay, I can get this crib. I'm pausing. And I'm excited. I'm in danger of excitement. I can do this. I can make this happen. And in the pause, I think about, okay, I'm not going to go to so-and-so to be a co I don't want to involve them in this, but I'll do it this way. I'll create, you know, I'll create some income and I'll create. So in the pause, when doubtful, now, this is a process, right? It didn't just happen in one day. There were probably half dozen times along the way of this doubtful process, I could have paused and stopped it. Pausing when doubtful is not just situational. This is real life we're talking about. This is real life we're talking about. Somebody is in a doubtful situation, married man, married woman, not nobody in one of these squares. You know, we just talking hypothetically. Not about nobody in here, but just in life in general. You know, somebody wink, somebody send an email out, somebody respond and don't have no business responding. Somebody see somebody that look good in a square, shout at them, holler at them, they lonely, they hit back. And then next thing you know, it's some stuff going back and forth. This cool at first. And somebody ain't sharing with their sponsor and ain't talking about this out loud and ain't doing a 10 step on it and ain't pausing. When agitated, no, I'm not agitated or doubtful. I know me. I know I don't play. I know I have the ability to pull the trigger on this. I know when I'm stepping out into, it's easier to stay out some shit than to get out some shit, right? I'm talking about the way spiritual principles look in real life with real people, right? Pause when out doubtful or agitated. Don't pause, you know, or might pause. And again, I don't do the next piece that's critical in the pause. Ask God for the right thought of action, and then do this. Constantly remind myself throughout the day, I ain't running this, I'm not in charge. Stay away from your life, stand back from your life. Remember the decision you made in the third step. This is a management decision, it's above your pay grade. Do what you're doing, just because you're in the realm of the spirit. And it talks about, Ralph, you'll be able to do some things now, and you might pay in some, okay, because now, I'm sitting up here in the 11th step and I'm thinking I'm being guided by God. I'm thinking I'm being guided by intuition because it tells me, wait for intuitive thought, relax, don't struggle. Intuitive thought, I'm on the square, she on, what's the chances of both of us showing up at a Zoom meeting at the same time? And what's the chances of her seeing me in a square at the same time I'm seeing her in a square and she see the wink and then I get a private message in the chat. What's the chances? I'm lonely. They say hi, must be God. 
Now, there's this little side thing about in a marriage, but it's unhappy. Oh, 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 I'm not really there because I got one foot out the door. Pause when doubtful or agitated. And ladies and gentlemen, the pause can be, I can pause anywhere in the process. I can be in a doubtful situation moving it forward. That's the way I, I'm just talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. In a doubtful situation, in this real estate deal, doubtful the whole time. The end result of that deal was that is, you guys might hear me, anybody who's heard my story talks about when I was 22 years sober, losing some stuff, losing a, you know, losing a, losing a house. That was the result of losing that house. Made decisions based on self to put me in position to be hurt. Didn't pause when, that, did, when, when doubtful, you know, knowing this money is above me. Yeah, I got it right today. Have I consistently had this kind of money to pay this kind of note over 30 years? But no, but, but this is what I tell myself when I don't ask for the right thought of action, when I don't go to the power. I ask me. It's some, it's some critical potholes in the 11th step. And when, when I pause, a lot of times inside the pause, I don't follow up with ask God for the right thought of action. Inside the pause, Ralph is still coming up with, oh, I got two or three alternative ways to attack this situation on my own. See, a lot of times we talk like it's, we talk like God's will, Ralph's will, and we talk like it's a black and white one thing. No, my will is, it's, it's, it's a malleable thing. You know, and it, it, it shifts and it moves. It's a shift shaper. So the shift shape, shift changer, shape changer. And uh, that, that, that whole uh, constantly reminding ourselves throughout the day. Constantly, dude, I ain't in charge. I ain't in charge. I ain't in charge. Way back at the third step, I got on my knees and I said, okay, take it, do it. When I got to the 10th step, it says, okay, now, so for by now, sanity is returned. And now it talks about the proper use of the will. But the proper use of the will is still not imposing my will on God's will. The proper use of the will is will, W-I-L-L, alignment, not me imposing, you know. And so that's the deal. And when I, but the cold thing for me, when I reach the 11, is God has done some stuff with me. He's done some stuff with me. And what he's done with me, the end result should be ego reduction. But in a lot of ways, here's the beauty of the power. Uh, um, you can use it for ego inflation because God operates anonymously too. And he does what it is that he does. And he returns me to my right mind. And he returns me to a place where I'm of helpfulness and I'm of use and I'm of value. And the same things that make me useful and that make me valuable and that make me have purpose are the same things that I can twist and turn instead of using as a tool I can use as a weapon. You know, and that's the yin and the yang. That's spiritual life. That's spiritual experience. That's the beauty of self. That's the beauty of God, of, of, of being a person. You know, ego is never going to disappear because it's what differentiates me from animals. It's what differentiates me from the rest of the mammals in the world. It's what differentiates me and makes me separate. God gave me something he didn't reserve for himself. And that's the power of whether or not, or the choice over whether or not I'm going to return his love. God don't have no choice. God is love. Gave me the choice over whether I'm voluntarily going to return his love. And that's the challenge. And that's the thing. And in the 11th step, particularly where I find the freedom, you know, I, I never thought I'd find the freedom in the discipline. But in the discipline, you know, of doing this, finding my own voice, finding my own walk, we have a path in Alcoholics Anonymous. You will hear some of the more rigid members, and I'm not a rigid guy, I'm not a dogma guy. You know, I'm not, I'm not that guy at all. I'm a maverick at heart, and I'm still a maverick, and I think most spiritually grounded people are. I think most spiritually grounded people, you know, are not automatons and are not robots. That's my, that's my opinion. In doing one of these deals, when you listen to me talk about the, the 11th step, you know, this is Ralph White's opinion. 
I don't speak for Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for any other members of Alcoholics Anonymous. What you get from me today is, is my experience with this process and with this specific step. And the way it looks and the way it plays out in my life, and more importantly, the value and the usefulness it has had for me. It has allowed me to walk as a grown ass man in my own skin, singing my own song in my own voice, walking in my own steps. You know, that's what we do. We have one path, but we don't have one walk. You find your walk on that path. You know, some folks skip, some folk dance, some folk limp, some folk have swag and pimp down the path, but you find your walk on that path. And the way to find it, curiously, seems to be by giving up on me. And by giving up on me and giving in to this power, I discover me. I discover me. I don't know uh, where I started, but I think that I've probably taken up all my time. Plus, I like to um, uh, hear from people. So, you know, I, I think I don't already. I could still talk some more, but I'm not. My name is Ralph White. I am an alcoholic.